Omega, deceased. Real name, Model X3Z. Occupation, employed for odd jobs by a New York City pawnbroker. Identity, Omega's true identity and origin were unknown to the general public of Earth. Legal status, citizen of the planet Srenesk. Other aliases, Sam. Place of creation, Protaris, Regreb system, Milky Way. Place of death, Las Vegas, Nevada. Known survivors, none. Group affiliation, none. First appearance, Omega the Unknown number one. Final appearance, as living being, Omega the Unknown number ten. History. The being called Omega on Earth was created by the civilization of the planet Protaris, which was inhabited by sentient beings of organic metal, somewhat comparable to the organic metal form of Colossus. See, Colossus. The climate of Protaris was radically changing, so that within a relatively short number of years, the Protar would find it uninhabitable. Unable to adapt themselves to the severe climatic changes, the Protar knew that they themselves were doomed to extinction, but decided to create a new race of sentient beings through bioengineering who would be able to live comfortably under the new conditions and perpetuate Protar culture. The Protar intended that this new race should be humanoid, unlike themselves, but needed to construct several intermediate models before they could succeed in perfecting one that was truly humanoid. Moreover, the Protar believed that humanoid thought processes and emotional responses were in many ways very different from their own. Therefore, the Protar believed it necessary to learn all they could about humanoid civilizations in order to program the minds of their humanoid creations properly. So, the Protar constructed a number of prototypes of living sentient beings, each one more truly humanoid than the previous one, and each in the form of a different sentient being whom the Protar knew to exist on another planet. Each of these prototypes, in turn, was placed on the planet populated by the beings it was modeled after, beginning with the least humanoid of the prototypes. Each prototype would also be programmed so that it would believe itself to be a member of the race among whom it was placed. Thus, the Protar tested each prototype to determine how it would function in a society and environment unlike their own. Each prototype was designed so that it somehow automatically transmitted whatever information it gained about the civilization in which it was placed back to the next prototype in the series. After a long period of testing, the Protar had only the last two prototypes left to observe in action. These were the prototypes who were the most humanoid in both psychology and physiology. One of them, model X3Z, translated from the Protarian alphabet and system of numbering, had already been placed years before on the planet Srenesk, whose culture, the Protar believed, was uniquely suited to teaching him concepts of morality and nobility. Another prototype, the final one, entirely organic in nature, had been created in the form of an Earth boy and placed on Earth some years before. There he was being raised by two Protar androids in human form, whom the boy, called James Michael Starling on Earth, believed to be his parents. The Protar believed that on Earth, Starling would learn about humanoid emotions, which he would be better able to handle once Model X3Z's high moral code was transmitted to him. Neither Model X3Z nor Starling were aware of their true origins. On Srenesk, Model X3Z had risen to become the finest member of the warrior caste. As a member of the warrior elite, Model X3Z had taken a vow of silence so that he rarely, if ever, spoke. The Srenescians had recently discovered what they believed to be the ultimate energy source, a means to tap the psionic energy of their world's biosphere, that is, all of the living beings of that world. To honor Model X3Z, the elders of Srenesk decided to make him the first of their citizens to be endowed with the ability to draw upon this biospheric energy.
The Protar were horrified when they learned this, knowing that the biospheric energy was too great for Model X3Z to control, and that he would transmit it, along with his knowledge, to Starling, who would also be unable to control it. Thus, all of the Protar's plans would be ruined. A number of Protar immediately set out for the planet Srenesk to prevent its natives from giving Model X3Z this power, but they were too late. Believing the Protar to be invaders bent on conquest, Model X3Z tried to use his power against them, but he could not control the power once he unleashed it in such large quantities, and the power destroyed all of the inhabitants of Srenesk and their civilization. Only Model X3Z himself, since he was at the very center of the catastrophe, and the Protar survived. The Protar bound X3Z with chains that prevented him from exercising his power. Unable to accept the idea that he could have obliterated the race he believed to be his own, X3Z decided that the Protar were responsible for the catastrophe. The Protar realized that X3Z had already transmitted the ability to tap biospheric power to Starling, to whom he was psionically linked. One Protar therefore stated that both X3Z and Starling had to be destroyed. Upon hearing this, X3Z broke free and, commandeering a small starship, went to Earth to find and protect Starling. On Earth, Starling and his supposed parents fell victim to an automobile accident. The androids were smashed, and thus Starling, who was not seriously injured, learned that they were really mechanical constructs. Starling was taken to New York City's Barrow Clinic, whose head, Dr. Thomas Barrow, was intrigued by Starling's high intelligence and unnaturally unchildlike, highly analytical manner. One night, one of the Protar broke into Starling's room at the clinic to destroy him. Model X3Z arrived immediately and began battling the Protar, but it was Starling himself who defeated the Protar by instinctively firing biospheric energy blasts from his hands. Starling was astounded by this discovery of power and recognized X3Z from dreams he had had. X3Z departed, and Barrow was puzzled to discover burns on Starling's hands in the shape of the Greek letter Omega. X3Z wore a symbol on his costume which coincidentally also resembled that letter. Barrow was unable to convince his board of directors to let him keep Starling at the clinic for further examination, but he was able to provide money to one of the clinic's nurses, Ruth Hart, to take care of Starling in her apartment so Barrow could keep an eye on him. So it was that Starling went to live with Hart, as well as her roommates, Daily Bugle freelance photographer Amber Grant, and, later, former disc jockey Richard Rory. X3Z, meanwhile, won public acclaim for his battles in New York City against various superhumanly powerful menaces, including the Hulk and Electro. The New York Daily Bugle dubbed X3Z Omega after the symbol on his costume. Omega and Starling again met when Omega attempted to rescue Starling and Grant from a psychotic killer named Kurt Klemmer. Again, Starling was the one to defeat the menace with energy beams from his hands. Eventually, Starling and a schoolmate named Diane Wilkins went on their own to the futuristic house where Starling had lived with his supposed parents. Omega went to Las Vegas with his sometime employer, a New York pawnbroker nicknamed Gramps, in order to use his psionic abilities to win enough money through gambling to be able to move Starling out of the Hell's Kitchen area of Manhattan, where Hart lived, to a home in a safer location. Omega and Gramps won a small fortune, but they were robbed by Ruby Thursday of the Headmen. See, Headmen. Omega pursued Ruby, who had used her powers to make herself resemble a normal woman, but Las Vegas policemen believed Omega to be attacking an innocent person and shot him dead. Hart, Grant, and Rory became involved with the Defenders in their attempt to locate Starling. In the course of ensuing events, Moondragon, see, Moondragon, established a telepathic link with a dying Protar who had come to Earth and thus learned the true origins of Omega and Starling. 
Starling, whom the defenders had located, refused to accept the truth and declared that he would use the full power of Earth's biosphere against Moondragon and the Protar for allegedly lying to him. But Diane then came forward, and Starling could not allow her to die. Yet he realized that once he unleashed his full power, it was indeed too much for him to control. Therefore, to save Diane's life, Starling turned his power inward, burning himself into ashes, but harming no one else. Moondragon buried the remains of Omega and Starling somewhere in outer space. Height, six feet, two inches. Weight, 220 pounds. Eyes, blue. Hair, black. Powers. Omega had superhumanoid strength, enabling him to lift, press, about two tons. His strength was such that he once halted an automobile that charged at him. Thanks to the technology of the Srenescians, Omega could draw upon the psionic energy of the Biosphere, all of the living beings of whatever planet he was on. While on Earth, he used this biospheric energy to project bolts from his hands, which were, in one case, powerful enough to obliterate an entire automobile. However, if he utilized biospheric energy beyond a certain level, he would lose control of it and cause a chain reaction throughout the biosphere, as he did when he destroyed all of the people of the planet Sreness. Omega had certain limited psychokinetic powers, which, for example, he could use to control the way in which a pair of dice fell. Omega was psionically linked to James Michael Starling, who, like himself, was an organic being created by the Protar. If either Omega or Starling were injured, the other would also feel pain. The psionic link caused the knowledge that Omega gained to be transferred into the subconscious mind of Starling and also caused Starling to become endowed with the psionic ability to draw upon biospheric energy, an ability which Omega also possessed. 